Hello oh, soldiers, this is Adam aka Weekly Game Night and today I will be covering one of my favorite war games, Company of Heroes. Subscribe to my YouTube if you want to see more of this sweet content and now let's get to it. Company of Heroes brings acclaimed RTS PC game series to your table. Its publisher, Bad Crow Games, found a sweet spot between a board game and tabletop wargaming and brought you this World War II strategy game that includes tactical choices, growing economy, unlocking buildings and units, and of course there is combat. A lot of combat. Company of Heroes is a competitive game for 1 to 8 players depending on how many expansions you're gonna get. In its core, two players will clash on a giant map in order to win scoring victory points or destroying enemy base in the annihilation mode. And right now Company of Heroes is back on Kickstarter with its 2.0 version and you can find the link to the campaign in the description of this video below. In this video, I'm going to do a game presentation, show you rules basics, and if you wonder what's new on Kickstarter, don't worry, I got that covered as well. You ready? Let's go! Company of Heroes is played in rounds and players will clash on one of the double-sided maps. Maps are divided into hexagonal fields of different types, land, water and structures. And with terrain packs, you can elevate the experience and the table presence, but we'll get to that. For now, just check out these painted buildings I did. Ain't they rad? At the start of the game, each player will receive a dashboard to track the current resources, income, victory points and experience points. On the dashboard, you will also find space for your commanders, depending on which one you choose, it will greatly expand your strategic options. Much like in the PC game, you will also have a chance to expand your base to gain access to new units. Well, with that being said, who am I trying to lie? We all want to see these great resin vehicles and soldiers miniatures. In Company of Heroes, you will find five playable factions, United States, the Great Britain, Soviets, Wehrmacht and Oberkommando West. Each faction comes with a set of soldiers models, light, medium and heavy vehicles, oh, and there are cannons, machine guns and mortars as well, oh boy. And if that wasn't enough, you can always go for elite unit expansion to get access to the most powerful units including Pershing, Joseph Stalin III and of course Kinnishtiger. And if you really want to make your field of battle pop out, then you should definitely check out the terrain packs. In terrain pack 1, which by the way is a must, you will find buildings, sandbags, trenches, objective poles and anti-tank obstacles. While the terrain pack 2 brings you some ruins, there and fine looking bunkers and because why not, there is a huge cathedral miniature as well. And guys, if you want more, I gotcha. There is a sea of expansions to Company of Heroes, both big and small. Coop, Solo, Stuck Assault Packs, Pathfinders, Easter Reinforcements. Um, be sure to check out the Kickstarter to see them all. And if you are like me, then why the hell not? Go all in, baby! Hey hey hey, welcome to the gameplay basics. In this sample scenario, Soviets are fighting Wehrmacht on the Stalingrad map, playing the standard game mode, trying to be the first to get to the victory points threshold. The game is divided into rounds and each round has three phases. Maneuver phase in which players determine the turn order and then take turns spending command points to move their units. Next we have damage phase. Teams simultaneously assign damage by placing damage dice and gain experience. And finally we get to the supply phase, in which you're gonna adjust and receive income, capture victory points and you can spend some on the units, buildings and upgrades. Let's start with the maneuver phase then. At the beginning of the game, determine which team is going first in the round. 
one player from each team rolls three white dice and the team with the most green symbols, then black symbols as a tiebreaker, goes first. This time Soviets will start. And now each side has three turns to move their units. On each turn you can spend 3 CP to move your units. As you can see, Soviets started by pushing with their conscripts to capture that victory point. The players alternately take their turns marking the movement with the colored cubes. Germans are not giving up that victory point and they are trying to push forward in order to destroy Soviet unit. After all the movement is completed, it's time for some combat aka damage phase. Company of Heroes features the spot system. All your units can see and shoot within two hexes, but with spotter or special abilities that distance can be extended. For now, what you need to know is that you need to see unit to target it. On this field of battle there are multiple battles going on, but let's focus on a single one, fighting for that victory point. Pane of Heroes there are four damage types, anti-infantry, armor piercing, high explosive and flame. Your unit will generate you combat dice, which players will assign to opposing units. For example, German Panzer IV tank generated 3 dice, 2 armor piers and 1 infantry, while their medium vehicle generated additional 2 dice. Our brave Soviet conscripts generated only 1 attack dice, which is infantry dice that can be only assigned to medium vehicle. It is now time to check the special defense matrix, because in this game, instead of rolling for attack, you will have a chance to roll for defense. For example, Soviets have 5 dice assigned, but can only defend against 3 of them, which are armor peers. So let's see how they do. Now it's time to roll some. Well, actually they managed to survive, them lucky bastards. Ha, this is how heroes are born. Conscripts suffer two casualties, but they will manage to capture that victory point. Now it's time to deal with the German medium vehicle. It has assigned one infantry dice, but as it's a yellow unit type, it will roll for our defense. Well, let's roll then. Mm, it's a miss. No damage then. By fighting, Units will yield you some experience points that you can spend on various upgrades, but we'll get to that later. With all the damage assigned, the damage phase is done. And now it's time for the supply phase. First you check if there are some new victory or resource points captured or lost. And yes, brave Soviet conscripts managed to capture one victory point. Now we're gonna adjust income and add the resources. Once we are ready with that, it's high time to buy some new units and some cool upgrades. As you can see, I will spend 2 manpower and 2 oil to buy me some SU-76. Well, but that's not all. I will also spend some experience points to buy me some commander. Plenty of commander cards that will affect your tactics, but... Let's buy this one. So I will spend 2 experience points and gain access to the first level abilities. I bought new assault gun, but I can still upgrade that. So I will spend 4 ammunition in order to give it plus 1 health and 1 experience point in order to expand unit sight. Once all players are done, it's time for another round. And so the game goes, round by round, you will try to get to the victory points threshold in order to win the game. This is just the beginning. Company of Heroes is a well thought tactical system that includes covers, pinning, side distance, special commander abilities, smoke, reinforcements and reapers. Wow, there is a lot to it. 
make sure to check out the latest rules to see how sophisticated and fun to play that system is. And there are some new rules as well, so let's check out what's new on Kickstarter and what's new to the 2.0 version of the game. Alright, once you've seen all the components and gameplay basics, now it's time to focus on what's new to the second edition of Company of Heroes and what's new on Kickstarter. Start with the game itself. You could probably hear community feedback that battles are a bit too static and it's hard to deploy most advanced units. Well, that's also my opinion by the way, but do not worry, bad crowd games have heard our voices and introduced tons of changes. First, we get completely rebalanced units for each single faction. Now, British don't have so easy to deploy its outposts and Oberkommando West newly spawned units will get slow feature, but basically every faction has been reworked. Next, all the commander cards are redesigned so that each of them have at least one ability to spawn a free unit. That's not all, the newest version of Rule brings some real nice changes as well. We get new abilities like Overwatch that will cause damage to the moving pinned units. Talking about pinning, now machine guns can only pin one unit and can shoot only at the pinned unit. Perhaps the most influential changes are Neutralizing and Assault. At the beginning of the damage phase, all the units that can capture objectives will first neutralize the objective. This way, even if you don't survive the damage phase, they will negatively influence the opponent income. And if your opponent will keep his units on the victory point, then you can still use the assault to attack the hex and take control of it. Also, all the maps have been reworked with the cosmetic visual changes, but also with the new hex grid system that now allows to connect all the maps any way you want. And there is a mission booklet with tons of new missions and setups. Oh, and objective points are now not printed on the maps, instead they are part of each scenario setup. There is more, but I advise you to check out all the changes on Kickstarter. What I saw with these new changes is exactly what this game needed, and I can't wait to try it out. But Crow Games have taken a completely different approach to this Kickstarter campaign. There is completely different expansions and core version breakdown and also they have distinguished content for new and returning backers marking it with blue and brown color respectively. Let's start with the new backers then. New core edition brings you two new maps, Moro River and Ardennes Forest. Inside the box you will find the US and Wehrmacht factions and of course everything you need to play this game. And now, each other faction has its own box and is available as an optional expansion. And of course, you cannot miss the terrain packs to really elevate the table present and experience. And if you want to access the previous maps, then go for legacy map pack and remember that these legacy maps are reworked to match the two new ones, so it's also an option for previous backers. And if you are like me, and you are returning backer, then there is a second edition update kit for $49 that provides you with an upgrade to the second edition and includes two new maps, complete set of commander cards and base buildings cards, new rulebook, bonus pip dice and many more, definitely worth grabbing. That's not all, there is a completely new solo folk of war expansion and lost brigade expansion that brings new units, new tactic options and faster spawning of more powerful tanks. And there is the terrain pack 3 with 40 rock walls and tree covers plus mega structures which I can't wait to see. As usual there is more. There are still stretch goals, but we will see that on Kickstarter as soon as they are unlocked. Well, this is it. I'm Adam aka Weekly Game Night, and if you like Company of Heroes, be sure to check it out on Kickstarter. Thanks for watching the video and see you on the battlefield.